What's up, sports fans? This is the Lucas Ross Sports Channel. It's time to continue my schedule previews and slash projected records for the upcoming 2023 college football season. And we continue them with the UCLA Bruins. There was a schedule last year for UCLA. The overall record for this team last year was 9-4 in 2022. 2000, um, you know, overall a 9-3 record in 2022 in the regular season. You look at who they played in the non-conference. They played Bowling Green, Alabama State, and South Alabama. So they didn't really have um, n not even a tough non-conference schedule at all. This was probably one of the easiest schedules they had last year. And, of course, they had to play almost every single Pac-12 team. But the non-conference schedule, really all not too tough. They had some tough losses on the road to Oregon. Um, that was probably their game right there. They could have probably won. But, you know, they Oregon pulled away late in the second half. And then Arizona, obviously, that game was at home. They probably could have won that game. And, and USC, obviously, another winnable game for them. So this team could have probably, you know, go 11-1 and last year. But they ended up going nine and three, maybe ten and two, perhaps because of Arizona and USC at home. But I think you know if they both beat uh, Arizona and USC, this team probably could have been eleven and one. But overall, still a pretty good season for this UCLA team. Uh, will they be a contender once again in the Pac-12? Let's get now to the schedule here for this UCLA team, and here's the schedule for them in 2023. You look at who they'll play in the non-conference this time. They'll play Coastal Carolina here at home, San Diego State on the road, and then NC Central. So not too bad of a non-conference schedule. Coastal Carolina will be a tough one. Uh, we, we obviously know about Coastal Carolina being one of those top Sun Belt teams over the years. Yeah, Coastal Carolina is a pretty good team. That will be a tough test, but at least it's a home game. Then they head on the road to play, play, face San Diego State. Another non-conference team that could really give UCLA trouble, but I think, you know, overall the non-conference schedule is not too tough for UCLA once again, like it was compared to last year. And of course, we know they're going to be playing almost every single Pac-12 team, so let's get right to the schedule now. So they'll start the season off with three non-conference games. They'll play Coastal Carolina here on September the 2nd, and then San Diego State here on the road, NC Central on September the 16th. Now, I think Coastal Carolina will give UCLA trouble. Like Coastal Carolina sometimes can upset a Power 5 team. Um, it could be one of those games that UCLA can probably lose. But like I said, you know, they have no business probably to lose this game. If it were to happen, I mean, that's, that's going to be really tough on their season. But, you know, I think with three non-conference games to kick off the year, that's pretty, um, that's pretty easy to kick off with. And then they'll open up Pac-12 play against Utah here on the road. So you have to play Utah rather early than it was last year. I, mean, I think I think they played them in like late October, but um, UCLA beat them last year. But this time it's on the road for them. Going to be a tough place to play. Of course, we all know Cam Rising coming back, so that's a big return there. Uh, they'll play Washington State here on October the 7th. Then Oregon State here on the road, and then Stanford here on the road. So you got back-to-back -back road games here with Oregon State and Stanford. Oregon State's obviously going to be a tough game here on October the 14th. Um, of course, you got DJ Ogilvy coming in. Hey, I, I'm, I'm kind of pretty high on Oregon State. I think you know they're going to be a pretty good team this year, but I'm not saying I'm high on them just yet. But I'm pretty high on them right now. But you know, I think Oregon State's going to be a tough place to play here for UCLA. Stanford, obviously, in a real rebuild mode. That's probably a winnable game there for UCLA on the road. Colorado here at home. A team that you don't want to play in November. I mean, they're recruiting pretty well down there. Uh, Deion Sanders coming in as the new head coach. What are they going to look like this year? Uh, good news is they'll get this one at home. Arizona on the road in November. This is a revenge game here for UCLA. Obviously a game that UCLA, UCLA lost last year at home to Arizona. Could UCLA probably get revenge and beat Arizona on the road? That could probably happen. Arizona was a decent team last year, but they weren't quite that good enough, so I don't really know what the roster is going to look like either for this team. Arizona State here at home on November the 11th, then they'll play on the road at USC. Rival game, you never know what can happen in this one. Obviously, the game was close last year, but we don't know what the rosters are going to look like. We don't know what UCLA is going to look like. Will they compete against this USC team? This time it's on the road, so it's going to be a tough place to play. And then they'll play Cal here to end things out on November the 25th. So all in all, the schedule not really too bad. I mean, the non-conference schedule not too tough, but they do have some tough road games this year. Of course, Utah, Oregon State, and USC will probably be their toughest road games of the year. And besides, you got a non-conference game on the road as well. That's San Diego State. But 
Overall, not not too bad of a schedule this year, but let's get right to the projected record for this UCLA team. And this is a scale I've been pretty much using uh, throughout these projections. If it's a 1% game, UCLA has no chance of winning in. 20% games, those will stay in the orange. These are games where UCLA will be about a couple touchdown of an underdog. 40% games, about a touchdown underdog in the yellow. 50-50 games, these will stay in the white. Pretty much games where I think they can go either way. 60% games, by about a touchdown in the purple. 80% about a couple touchdowns in the blue. And then 90% games, these will stay in the green. These are games where UCLA is going to be favored by more than three touchdowns. And as you see, I already have... Three games on here, Coastal Carolina, San Diego State, and NC Central. I think they have no business to lose to Coastal Carolina, but I'm going to say this game right here is about 90%. I think it's going to be not over 90%. I think this will be about 90% on, on the percentage. San Diego State, I think, is probably the same thing because it's on the road, but I think NC Central will be over 99%. So I think they'll be, I'll be, I think they'll be at least three touchdowns of a favorite heading into all three of those non-conference games. So I'm going to say that UCLA will probably have no business of losing those games. Uh, we go to the games now where um, UCLA is going to be about a couple touchdowns, maybe the blue or maybe the purple, if I have any blue or purple games. But I just got three blue games on here. I got Colorado here at home, Arizona State at home, Cal here at home as well. Colorado, Arizona State, Cal, these are all home games. Obviously, I have to put them in the blue because they're Pac-12 matchups. And when it comes to the Pac-12, we don't really know what's going to happen. The Pac-12 is obviously, you know, wide open each and every single year. It was wide open last year with some different teams to have a chance to win the Pac-12. But these three teams last year, they were not good. Colorado, Arizona State, and Cal, um, you never know what can happen. But I think there'll be at least a couple touchdowns of favorites because they're both at they're all three at home, so that's the good news there for UCLA. Now let's go to the games where UCLA is going to be favored by about a touchdown, and the purple games at 60%. And I got three of those on the schedule as well. I got Washington State here at home, Stanford on the road, and then Arizona on the road. Washington State, pretty much a home game. I can see them being a touchdown favorite. Um, you know, Washington State was a pretty good team last year, so it, it's just based off of the, where the teams were from last year. Stanford on the road, I mean, obviously it's a road game. I have to put it in the purple, but it's a rebuild year for Stanford. I don't really know what they're going to look like. Arizona is obviously a revenge game. Now, I probably could have put this one of the 50-50 games, but, you know, from where Arizona was last year, I got to put them here in the purple. Besides, UCLA um, was had a better record than Arizona last year, even though Arizona beat them. So I think um, Arizona will um, have a chance to probably be a heavy underdog, and UCLA will still be at least a touchdown favorite. So I think these are the games where UCLA is going to be favored by about a touchdown. And the rest of the games here on the schedule, um, Utah, Oregon State, USC, they're not all 50-50 games for me. I'm just going to say that I'm going to put them in the yellow. I think UCLA will be underdogs in all three of these games um, on the road. Utah on the road, Oregon State on the road, and USC. The reason why is because I think it's this is going to be a tough – these are going to be tough places to play for UCLA. Obviously, we don't know what UCLA, UCLA is going to look like depending on what the season they had last year, and we don't really know what the roster is going to look like either. But, yeah, these are all tough road games for U for UCLA. Utah on the road is especially tough. Oregon State on the road. And then USC here on the road as well. That's a rival game. I probably could have put that one in the 50-50 game, but it's on the road. I can't put it in the Y. I'm going to put, put that one in the yellow. So, yeah, all these games right here, I see UCLA being an underdog in, a heavy underdog, like about a touchdown underdog. I'm not saying they're going to lose them. I think they have a really big shot, though, to win these games on the road. So, you look at the schedule, let's now get to the projection here. Um, like I said, it's not my official prediction. I don't do my predictions until about the month of May. So if you look at the, look at the schedule here, um, games that they're favored in and also the games that they're underdogs in, like those three yellow games, the overall projected record for this UCLA team in 2023 comes out to be 9-3 for 2023. So the same record they had in the regular season last year. I think they could possibly go 9-3 once again. I think best-case scenario would probably be 10-2. Maybe they can win one of those road games, like against Utah, Oregon State, or USC. I think worst-case scenario for this team would be probably 8-4. and four. Um, You know, they could probably lose, you know, four games. What if they lose one of those non-conference games? What if they lose to San Diego State on the road and Coastal Carolina at home? That could possibly happen, but, you know, I think um, they'll be – if you look at the purple games on here, I think, you know, they have a, um, some games they'll lose on this schedule as well. Like Arizona, they 
got beat by them last year, so that could happen again. But I think all in all, I think UCLA, their projection will come out to be 9-3. and three. So I think, you know, this is probably the um, pretty much an accurate projection here for UCLA. Um, let me guys know what you think about this um, projection here for UCLA. And we'll continue to do more projections throughout this week here. And pretty much, you know, the Big 12 and ACC schedule should be coming out soon. So we'll probably get the Big 12 and ACC teams um, right out of the way. So, But stay tuned here for more sports content on the Lucas Ross Sports Channel.